Tom Verducci knew about this, even though Tom was working on the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers telecast yesterday. Tom on loan from MLB Network joining us there. Pretty impressive performance from a Detroit Tiger pitcher there, Tyler Alexander. Yeah, it is. I mean, listen, this is an interesting season. We're seeing all kinds of, I think, weird records and schedules and anything goes. We knew that going in, but I guess if you wanted to skip to the shorthand, Dan, you would say, let's just have the Yankees play the Dodgers tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go, go straight to the World Series and forget about this other nonsense and weirdness. <laughs> if not those two, then who? Uh, really good question. You know, the Braves to me are an underrated team. I mean, they won what 97 games last year and uh, they're kind of an experienced younger team. Now I think they're a little bit dangerous. You know, the American league, the Minnesota twins are just picking up where they left off last year. We've seen them though in the postseason, just can't get by the New York Yankees, but there's like a, a, a tier of near elite players, but I got to say the Yankees and the Reds and the, and the Dodgers are in their own tier above that elite tier. Also, with what I, I watched Clayton Kershaw yesterday because I was kind of holding my breath after getting scratched opening day. That's as good as he's looked in three years, I'm going to guess, Tom. There's no doubt about that, Dan. Listen, he went to Driveline, the high-tech facility in Washington to try to recapture some of his fastball velocity, and he has. I mean, he hit 93, a little over 93 yesterday. That's That was his best fastball in at least two years, since July of 2018. And I think even better than that, Dan, it was just the ball was coming out of his hand easy. His command was impeccable. Mm -hmm. I was surprised that he went back out for the sixth inning. Uh, he clearly talked to the manager, Dave Roberts, and said, hey, I'm good. That was a really good sign. He held his stuff through that game. Um, yeah, if you're a Dodger and watching him pitch, he I don't know if you noticed this, Dan. He worked so quickly. He worked twice as fast as he normally does. I think that's just an indication of how good he felt. These postponements over the weekend, I, I liken baseball to being on a high wire with no net right now. It just feels like the commissioner is holding his collect. Their baseball is holding their collective breath. Can the commissioner exhale anytime soon with this situation <laughs> right now? No, I don't think so. Because listen, we know that this season for the owners anyway is mostly about the postseason, right? There's a billion dollar pot of gold at the end of the postseason for the owners from TV money. More than 60% of national TV money comes in the postseason. So they need to get not just to the end of the regular season, but really to the end of the postseason. This is what this season is about. And I think what happened first with the Marlins, now with the Cardinals, has been a wake-up call. I think for the most part, Dan, players have been really good about sticking to the protocols. But these were cases that proved just stepping out of line a little bit mm -hmm. jeopardizes Everybody. And when I say everybody, I'm talking about the entire league, not just one team. So you can't get together with your buddies after a game and have a pizza, which is what's going on. You know, you can't go back to the same behavior that you had before. And, and I think a lot of teams, I know the Dodgers had a team meeting about this. The Diamondbacks did as well. We got to be better, guys. You know, there's no room to just let your guard down. And I, I think, as I said, players on the whole have done a really good job. But that was a wake up call that it has to be even better. Does baseball punish the Marlins franchise or these players? You know, I don't think so. They're doing their own investigation, Dan, to get to the bottom of this. I think they already know in a general sense, you know, what was happening, where the breach came. The good news for baseball, Dan, is nobody believes, at least in baseball, that the act of playing baseball outside leads to transmission of the disease, right? Mm -hmm. The Phillies played the Marlins when a bunch of their players were positive. And all week long, no Philly player tested positive. I think that was the underlying silver lining in this case, is that it's mostly about what are you doing away from the field of play? That brings us to our final story, Ioannis Cespedes. And can, can you explain in 30 seconds to us what happened yesterday with the Mets outfielder? Well, there was a period there where the Mets were clearly concerned because he wasn't at the ballpark. Nobody had heard from him since the previous day. They actually sent security people to his room at the hotel. They opened the door. There's no cesspitus. There's no personal belongings. He's clearly not there and, and gone, but they still don't know where he is. It wasn't until during the game that his agent called up and said, oh, by the way, he's gone home. He's not going to play for the rest of the year. So, you know, bottom line is good thing that he's safe. I respect as 
as the Mets do, anybody's decision if they don't want to play in this atmosphere, right? Lorenzo came to the Brewers, did so the other day. But you know what? He told the team what he was doing. <laughs> he didn't get up and leave without telling anybody. That was the irresponsible part. The decision to opt out, I get it. You know, it's going to happen. We're going to see some more, Dan, especially when it comes to older players who have the security of money and or position on a team. Yeah, but let's talk about maybe an underlying theme here that he wasn't going to reach incentive levels. He didn't like – he was complaining about his playing time a little bit. Yeah. I understand the health part of this, but I think this is the part of the healthy bank account that was bothering him more than his own health. No question. And that was one of my concerns going into the season, that you're playing amid a pandemic. There's some risk involved. Let's face it. There's nobody in the stands. Your paycheck is a fraction of what it normally would be. What keeps you going? What keeps you going is the chance to play in the postseason and maybe some personal records or we hope personal pride. But I think if you're not playing well and your team's not playing well and you have that security, I expect we're going to see a few more guys, not giant waves of people, but a few more guys say, you know what? Why am I here? I'm just going to go home. Not so much count my money, but make sure I stay safe and secure. I wonder if the Mets tried to embarrass him by filing a missing persons report, Tom. Like, I think that isn't his agent, his former agent, the GM of the Mets? Yeah. Like, I don't know. It felt like they tried to embarrass. Cespedes was embarrassing the Mets. It felt like the Mets might have sent a volley back to say, oh, we're going to file a missing persons report here. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know. I think, understandable to read it that way. I do. Listen, they put out the statement that he wasn't there and they had no idea where he was without really any sense of his well-being. Now, you can... Praise them for being transparent, for a guy showing up the, not at the ballpark and telling the media that he wasn't there. They didn't have to do that. But I guess if you're a little bit of a cynic, <laughs> you would say there was a motivation behind that than just transparency. Was somebody taking a shower or are they at the sink there, Tom? <laughs> that, I'm in my basement studio, as a, if I have another studio. It's only the studio I have. <laughs> Uh, and I think that has something to do with the uh, irrigation system running. Oh, okay. I, I, I thought I, I thought somebody uh, was was uh, taking a shower there or the something. The wonderful world of plumbing. <laughs> Just the, the audible sound of plumbing. Music to my ears. Oh, thanks for joining us as always, Tom. We appreciate your time. Yeah, anytime, Dan. Thank you. Tom Berducci, MLB Network analyst. He was on the call of Dodgers and the Diamondbacks.